I have 10 poems in my latest edition, uh, The All Stork Faces, The Mirror, that deal with uh, racism and race relationships. I want to read this one, Taking a Stand. How little I knew about racial injustice before I turned 14. That year, a black man refused to step aside for our neighbor when they met on the sidewalk of our little town in Alabama. When curses did not move his stiff legs, Mr. Baker stepped into Western Auto, barred a big barrel baseball bat, and brutalized the man with total impunity. No charges were ever filed. Shocked from my slumbering ignorance, I began to notice things. There are no black kids in my school, no black clerks in our stores, no black police or chef deputies. But there were restrictive signs, called waiting room and whites only, who with eyes could not see. Why then were there no calls for equality? I never heard a single voice decry the evils of our Jim Crow ways until my freshman year at college in 1953. There, I took a stand against my South, full of words, but with much yet to learn. It was Richard Wright's novel, Native Son, featuring Bigger Thomas on Chicago's diced urban stage that first showed me the depth of black alienation and the limitation of the goodwill of a few white people. It would take heroic confrontation and massive civil disobedience that far too often was met with bigoted violence, jailing, even murder. Courageously, the legions of civil rights warriors persisted into hope raised her beautiful, smiling face. No, no, racism did not die with the demise of legal segregation. But don't tell those like John Lewis that nothing has been gained by their sweat and blood. And yet, the battle cry for justice and equality still rings loud and clear from coast to coast. Where do you stand? Where do you stand?